Hello, boys and girls, my name is Hot C and welcome back to another day in Minecraft where we are not mining because this is the premise of this series. And behind me there are two shulker boxes with the materials for our build project today. So let's have a look. Uh, we have quite a few building blocks and then you might ask Hot C what building are you building with potions? Well, we will need the potions because we need some more building blocks uh, out of the nether. And uh, that can be dangerous, so it's best to, uh, to come prepared. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that's what I will do first. We are back here at our nether fortress because we need two things. We need a few nether brick fence. Those are blocks that I'm actually allowed to break because they are not full blocks. And then we also want to encounter a, a few widow skeletons. Um, but those can be scary. So ideally I would have preferred a nether fortress in In the nether waste, no, not the nether waste, Soul Sand Valley, because there they uh, spawn more frequently. And against the blazes. I have this. Hello. And I need six widow skeleton skulls because I need two beacons and one I got. So Maybe let's also a bit of a barrier there that gets rid of that and then we just run back and forth until we Six Widow Skeleton Skulls and at one point I was quite lucky as a big horde of Widow Skeletons came running at me on this side and uh, killing them got me two out of these six. So uh, yeah, Silk Touch. So I think we are good here so we can make our way back and um, with an elytra it's way easier. Now that I have the uh, widow skulls we can actually summon two widows because uh, I'm interested in the uh, nether star so we can make two beacons that we need for the project but as I cannot be bothered to do it in a more challenging way today we will do it the cheaty way we'll go to the end and uh, summon the weather under the portal 
and that takes care of itself. But first we have to get under the portal and remember we cannot mine anything. That's why I brought a bit of TNT to uh, help along a bit. Uh, and we need to have three blocks uh, of space uh, under the uh, bedrock so that might take uh, uh, a while uh, and as you can see um, the uh, endstone is quite lost resistance but there we have it that's the the lowest block so uh, on on this this level we should be good so uh, let me finish that off and there we have it we have uh, freed up the space below so let's determine the exact middle uh, that's the uh, easiest way to just go diagonally. So that's the middle block of this setup. And this is where the tail of the wither goes. So we will uh, add some obsidian below here. And it's important that we have uh, from the floor down here uh, to up there a headroom of three so next the soil 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 sand and then uh, we can grab three widow skulls and if everything goes right the wither should suffocate in the bedrock and we can help Yes. Takes damage and we can help here. And there we have the first uh, nether star. So uh, let's do that another time. We do have three more skulls. Um, and then we can actually craft a beacon. That's number two. Right? So our business here is completed and we can go home. I did not tell you what form we are actually building. So it will be a totem form with uh, emeralds as a side product. And we are out here a bit out on the ocean back in that direction. That's where I get all my sand. And you can also see uh, there is a coral reef uh, and a temple that I have not seen before. But our base is basically somewhere in that direction. So I think for the for the build itself uh, that will be a time lapse and uh, then 
in the end I can walk you through how this uh, this actually works <laughs> into the detail and let's do it from the top this ice layer here that's actually where the rates will spawn because they spawn on the top most uh, uh, block which is this 5 by 5 ice uh, platform and as they will spawn tightly packed they will shoot out in each direction and the ravagers uh, have a bigger hitbox and they will get caught by the lava here so that deals with them and placing the lava you might have seen is a bit tricky because you have to ensure that the lava flows down here onto the chest and not onto the other side and I would imagine if we place blocks uh, nearby that would actually update the lava and it would flow the other direction. Then of course here uh, on the side uh, below we have a water channel that goes all uh, to the middle uh, three by three with uh, trapdoors in the middle and then we have one additional layer below that that basically funnels everything into a single block now this layer here is where the real action happens the raid uh, drops down here and we have here uh, uh, curious uh, contraption that uh, is currently turned off but we can turn uh, it on by uh, quickly flicking this lever and this will alternate the two pistons with the trapdoors and when they fall down to there uh, that will uh, damage them uh, and uh, we actually need that because just having one uh, piston was, would not be enough because there is always the chance that uh, one would fall through while the piston is uh, retracted uh, so we have to to basically negate that the only drawback with this system here is to turn this off you actually have to break the redstone and then uh, there is another system that basically uh, controls one 
loop of the raid, which is uh, controlled by this uh, uh, ESO hopper clock down there, which contains uh, 74 items. Uh, and uh, that has uh, multiple effects. One effect is here, this dispenser will dispense the lava out there. So uh, killing everything that's still in the, in the chamber. Yeah, there it happened. Uh, because uh, every once in a while we have to spawn a new raid and basically leave our post uh, here. Uh, actually, uh, we would be standing here and uh, when we leave, we drop down and then come back up. But we have to ensure that when we come back up, the uh, killing chamber uh, on there is actually empty because there might be some witches and uh, we can only deal uh, with everything if it's a one hit kill because there could be witches in there and there could be uh, evokers in there and uh, we have to make sure that we kill the evokers with one hit uh, so that we do not get any waxes. Uh, then we have minecart here and there to uh, collect any loot and through this narrow gap we can hit them. And uh, with uh, this clock as well, this trapdoor um, will also um, uh, flip open and lower us down. What we do also have in here is uh, a chamber where we can place uh, villagers with a chop that will gift us um, with goodies once we come back with the hero of the uh, village. I think that's everything on uh, on this floor, so uh, let's go down to the next one. Now this here is an intermediary station, uh, and uh, maybe this is a good time to mention that this farm is a design by Raceworks. Uh, it's not the uh, most recent form, the most powerful form, but I think it's uh, easy enough to build and fulfills our need. So what we have here, if we come down, we come down along here um, uh, towards this, this pole and uh, this water there uh, that slows our fall down and then we do have uh, a villager sitting in there which currently is not present and we do have a weird setup with two pistons that can move a compost around and that basically uh, makes the compost accessible to the villager or not and uh, a raid is is triggered uh, when the uh, uh, player with bad omen effect um, enters a village and the way we do it or the way a village is defined is uh, it's the center of uh, um, the, the village interest and we have uh, one village here uh, and the in point of interest is uh, uh, handled through the workstation and then 
we have novel down there so that basically puts the the center of the village um, uh, right on uh, here between those but if we move the composter up that basically uh, makes this village here not part of the village and the center of the village moves down and that's then basically out of reach when we are up there so while we are up there uh, we cannot spawn a new raid we have to come down and all this is done by uh, when we, we fall down we are slightly in this water we touch the pressure plate and that will uh, trigger this uh, uh, this timer uh, which has 757 items in them and that will basically uh, do a, a switch rule of the of the composer up and down right then there is one last station it's this one and there you heard it how that works if I can get up here when we come down we have uh, the same setup here we touch the pressure plate we get signal out signal comes back and that basically pushes the player into the uh, water column that goes up and uh, completes the cycle bringing them up then down here we have uh, a double beacon uh, with regeneration and strength 2 uh, plus uh, resistance and I'm not sure if that's the, the, the right combination but we can always change that so um, what we need to do now is uh, getting the villages in one up there one down there and uh, while we're at it we might also add the ones all the way to the top uh, for gifting us uh, any goodies and then comes testing to figure out uh, does this all work so i think that's more than enough uh, for this episode and uh, we will deal with villagers which is always a hassle in the next one so join me then until then and goodbye